you're watching Plus TV Africa, and welcome back to Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Um, we're going to be talking to Mr. Edafi Esogene in a bit, but until that time, I'd like to share with you a slide that shows um, the interesting developments that happened in the league in the course of the last season. Like I said earlier, for the first time, we had a TV deal with Star Times that, um, that paid 1.06 billion naira, that should be, that should read billion, 1.06 billion naira to the league. And that deal is on for five years. This year, it's going to, it's going to be 1.11 um, billion um, naira because they're going to be adding 15 million naira progressively every season, all right? We also had an OTT deal with, um, uh, with Propel Sports Africa. Propel Sports is a British company, by the way. They're the streaming partners uh, of the league. And the arrangement they have with the, with the league is a profit sharing agreement. So we really don't have the exact details of um, what they have made from that deal so far. Now, another interesting um, uh, development in the league last season was the fact that we had three private clubs in the MPFL. Unfortunately, two of those clubs have been re relegated. And I'm talking about Sporting Lagos and um, Doma United. But the good news is that at least one more private club is joining. Lagos is still going to have a club in the MPFL as joining from the NNL will be Ikorodu City FC. All right. And then for those of you who follow the league, even casually this, this last season, you will remember the Oriental Derby between Rangers and Ayimba. All right. The stadium was packed full. The media was suffused with news about, you know, uh, Rangers and Aimba, news and analysis, that is, about uh, Aimba and Rangers. A lot happened that showed a bit of a glimpse into what the future of our football will look like if we succeed in, in, um, in doing all of the good work that was done last season. All right, so if we could keep that going and we have at least 30 to 50 important matches in a season. That would be a lot of business, a lot of, of um, engagement, and a lot of revenues to be made um, in our football, in our, in our domestic club football. So, there'll be, so for those of you who saw that, uh, the Oriental Derby was really huge. Across all media platforms, the engagement was was very strong, you know, stronger than, you know, even the Euros that, were, that uh, people were planning to watch. And to some extent, even what happened in some parts of the European football season. So that shows that when we get serious with our football, the way we did with our music and movies and technology, Nigerian, the MPFL is going to be the biggest event in the Nigerian sports calendar every year. All right. And then social media, has been an absolute um, uh, rave for, for our sports this, this, um, this season, for the MPFL at least, that is. A lot of the media activity was driven through social media. And you know, a lot of kudos must go to the young Nigerian sports journalists who have taken a shine to the MPFL and they're giving it as good a promotion as you know, um, it has ever received. So that kind of publicity has sort of like um, improved the audience numbers, the interest, the engagement numbers. And if that continues into next season, the MPFL it will be expected to grow numbers in, in terms of viewers and interest uh, significantly. And then also there was match day commerce improvement. If you go to our stadiums now, maybe because of the, the, the private clubs that have joined, led by Remo Stars, and um, Sporting Lagos, you know, even um, Rangers International and other clubs, Shooting Stars is another one. They have upped the ante, and then you know, commercial activity has generally grown in in the league. So a lot of things are happening now that um, we need to be uh, thankful for. But now the question is, you know, when when I hear about the league and 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 what's going on, you know, you you tend to hear 
people complain about how the MPFL management is not doing a good job, you know, and, um, and they also blame the NFF. But here's the question I'd like to pose to you. Are we as a country going to leave the fortunes of our league in the hands of just a few people in the MPFL or the NFF? Because if that is what we're doing, it means that we will all either grow with them or shine with them, or we will all suffer as we have done for the, for the, for the past few decades. But now would be um, a daffy, you know, to put some light on this topic, all right? Um, hello, Edafe. All right, so let's go. Edafe, our season has ended, and I've told the yes, I've told uh, the viewers that you are the man who can who can talk about the developments that happened in the league um, this season. You know why we should all, all have um, a cost to look forward to next season. Uh, what, what do you think? What do you think um, we should be feeling about what happened in the league last year? Are we making progress? Yeah, of course we're making progress. Uh, last the season before this one that just ended, we had the average league, and um, after the average league, it was resolved that uh, let's go forward uh, and do a full season and try as much as possible to run a season that would almost align with the European league calendar. So uh, the transfer window it is aligned. For those people who keep asking, must we align our calendar with the European calendar? Yes. If we are still banking on Europe for transfers, then we need to align that so that players don't just run in the middle of the season and then they are even afraid to tell their club. They just get an agent to, you know, get them visas and they escape. So that's the reason why we're aligning it. So when Europe is on break, whether it's the mid-season break or the end of the season break, the summer or winter break, the players can now go for trials. That's one. Secondly, I mean, our league is a dependent league, so it needs a lot of money. And uh, from the average league where... It was GTI that funded the league 100% without any external funding. We had, um, you know, the, the TV right deal. Uh, it's a case, it's a deal that I would consider half bread is better than food changing. Or in the absence of none, whatever is available can be managed while building the brand. Again, let's not forget that because of all of the drama transition from Show Deco to Lebele, who I think, in my own opinion, am I the wrong? It's not the best person to run the league, but hey, let's manage the the one the table with one stool and then see how we can eat on it until we get a proper table. Having said that, I think that we made giant leaps and progresses. At least GTI brought a bit of credibility to the league. There's corporate governance and structure. Referees are paid ahead of games now. We don't have we don't have all the money yet, but considering comparing what we have previously to what we have now. I think this is better. It's a step in the right direction. I will find a path to follow. Okay. Do you get a sense that the clubs are beginning to wake up to their, to their responsibility? Um, when, when you look at the sort of like match day experience, the promotion of, of these clubs, if, 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 I'm, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, virtually every, based on my own study, virtually, virtually every club in the MPFL, in fact, all clubs in the MPFL, maintained some sort of social media activity across different platforms. And they promoted and they, they tried to do even live updating in some cases. Do you think they still need to do more? And, and where is the media in Nigeria um, um, supposed to, what is the media in Nigeria supposed to do to help in promoting the league as well? This question is hydra headed, but let's tackle it uh, one after the other. In terms of what the clubs have done, I think it is one percent of the hundred percent that they've done in terms of you know putting that content. We're in the era now where a couple of seasons ago, Amazon paid uh, Amazon Prime paid Manchester City some good money to do a content called All or Nothing, and that content became the live blood of how fans connect to the inside of their club beyond match day and journalistic uh, attributes. And when Man City saw how much Amazon Prime made, they created the, the, Man the Manchester City studio that ended up creating that Together Travel or Travel Together video that they, they, they also put out on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken, and they made more money. Even though the quality of the production was way below what Man City, uh, what Amazon Prime produced for the All or Nothing, but the money they made was more. Why am I referencing that? Uh, Man City have seen 
where there is opportunity to make money via media, media. and you see that majority of the interviews with Man City players, with uh, Pep Guardiola, were all done via their own internal media channels long before anybody brings in anything extra. So in, 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 in the right sense, I think our medias are just on Twitter, our clubs are just on Twitter, so, uh, Facebook, TikTok, very, very minute. So if they can step it up a bit and do more content, uh, you have about 35 players, we should be able to run through club in-house interviews that club have produced for 35 players at least twice in an entire season. We should be able to know their coaches, what they do. So many things off the ball interviews that we can do. Why they dress the way they dress, why they talk the way they talk, why they behave the way they behave. Anything, you know, their wives, their girlfriends, their relationship. We need to know that this is football, this is what sells. And exactly. some clubs are it's supposed to have their own podcast. Why they don't have it, I don't know. But hey, they are trying. I'm not going to knock them completely like, okay, I'm ungrateful for what they've done. But it's not like they are, they are doing it for me. It is also for their business because once they grow their numbers, the sponsorship, the money, everything that we're looking for will just be there. So I, I think that as much as I am happy that we're making a little bit of progress, we could accelerate it. The real people that have made massive progress um, uh, for the league, I, I think, in my opinion, are the the the, uh, the journalists, the young and upcoming journalists who have decided to be creative on social media space. The IPF to read the Tobia Depaju, the Puja, the all of these guys, the Kadesh and Emini Truth and all of that that have really made it. I mean, we we hope that we would double or quadruple it in the coming seasons. See, um, sorry, it, uh, Edafe, I'm I'm really having a a, a bit of a, a a problem hearing you, right? So I I don't know where the challenge is, but. Yeah, I, I get the sense of what you can have you, just... Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Now, okay, the so thing is, uh, like you have said, I think most of the clubs in Nigeria are struggling with finances, right? Yes, absolutely. So, and to do this thing, to, to, to do quality media work, to, to, to do quality, the sort of thing that you're talking about, like maybe to do like some documentaries from time to time and to to consistently um, deliver good content. We need more, than, more staff than maybe a lot of them can, can afford. That's on the one hand. And on the other hand, we have to deal with the reality that in our league, we still have, as of last season, we had 17 teams. There were government-run clubs. You, you know, so yeah, maybe so, th there are challenges, but is there a way the media in Nigeria can, can um, assist can step up their own game to to cover for the clubs, to, to help the club, not cover for them, to help the club. Traditional media in Nigeria, if mm. you can hear me, practice diabolical media. <laughs> diabolical press. They practice, we practice diabolical media in Nigeria. And what I mean by that is, uh, we have this thing in laws that says, I cannot be part of people who help Nigeria to be better. So if you look at the EPL that everybody is excited about, yeah. the EPL is powered by the money that comes from um, the Sky Sports, ITV, BT Sports, being being and the BBC. About uh, six billion every three years, which is two billion every season, right? Uh, in Nigeria, for instance. Uh, people don't. People are not willing to put money in the league, and you know the excuse is, "Oh, the league is not commercially viable." Yes, it is. Uh, if you if you pro produce a Nigerian uh, league based content and you tell the media in Nigeria to share it, or they should put it out there on their platform, they will tell you who will pay. But you will see them talk about Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo for free. Who's paying them for those? Mm -hmm. And they tell you, "Oh, the fact no." Who controls information controls the balance of power. Yeah. If all the media in Nigeria decide today that, oh, we want to talk about 80% of the NPFL, then Nigerians will conform. They will automatically start following the NPFL. It is what the media tells the people that the people follow. Yeah. Media is the is the, the leader of the masses, right? Yeah. But in Nigeria, we feel this thing that, no, if Nigerian league is not good, it's very commercially viable, uh, our our you know business will drop. I don't know who tell anybody that, and so we don't come in. And on the other side, you said that it takes money 
to do some of this work that they are doing. So because they don't have all the money, they don't want to do it. Uh, my people in Pigeon English, the police fire will say, picky away my money, cook food, hungry daddy killer. Yeah. So in other, in other, in other words, what I'm saying is, if I know that okay, pushing media content for my my club's media channel will in the next five or ten years start producing millions of dollars to us that we cannot use to run the club properly. I would go any woodland, look for the money, put the money into use, put a, a, a crew of four, it's not much, a crew of four that will travel with the team, that will do a lot of work and training, and then, you know, sell them. I can sell IP to them, okay? It's not much compulsory that you must pay people. You pay them a little and say, okay, we're going to sell you IP. You're running this YouTube. If this YouTube become monetized, for every time we make a payment out, say ten thousand, let's put our treasure treasure at ten thousand dollars. Every ten thousand dollars we pay out, we will give you ten or twenty percent. So if you cross for uh, ten thousand dollars is uh, two thousand dollars. Four of them will share two thousand dollars for every time. So one thing is they are driven, they are driven to push the content to work fast to get to that place where they can earn ten thousand dollars. Every month, and two thousand dollars every month. Okay, and on, if you sign on. them up to royalty deals, then you are doing good business. Okay, hang on, Edafi. Yeah, you know, I I I tuned into your 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 conference, your conference on Twitter. Um, yes, and, and then the media, it was basically media guys in that in that space, and most of yeah. them, I suspect, were new media uh, journalists. True. Yeah, and people were talking about how they had lost deals because, you know, the league doesn't have the sort of numbers that they could have used to, to uh, secure those deals. You were one of the people who said you lost a, a big deal because the numbers weren't good. So in a sense, I mean, you are like the clubs that. as well. You know, you know that you're going to make money from this thing, right? Why? So it means that you two must then go full throttle just like like the clubs to to say you know what we'll do anything we can to make sure that the league is successful because like you said the media controls behavior controls interest controls what the public you know um uh, in most cases subscribes to so i imagine that look uh, you cannot afford to leave it to just the clubs to do or even the the mainstream media that you call the diabolical do you understand in their ways you guys m might have to seize the initiative and dr and run with it so that you can you can you can get the deals that you want to get. What do you think? Uh, in the last uh, three years, I've invested my personal uh, on the last count because I try to do calculations as I go so that I don't lose count of it so that I can pass the information to my children. Hmm. In the last three seasons, I've invested uh, thirty one point two million of my personal money in trying to create content and promote the league. Mm. I've not gotten any return on that investment. It doesn't mean I will not get it. I will, but it's going to take some time. Uh, when you look at the guy that runs the AFTV, Arsenal Fan TV, Robbie Hart, he had failed in almost everything, running a nightclub, being a DJ, trying to be a musician, trying to be a producer. But guess what he's made his biggest money from? Running a YouTube channel that talks about Arsenal, whether for good or for bad, just banter. They are not officially the club's madness, but for that. And the success of that channel became so good that he created the DR, another YouTube channel. The United Stands have grown up to 1.8 million subscribers just because of that. And off the back of that, that guys, those guys are sure of between 300 to 500,000 pounds per annum. How many jobs in the UK today provide you that type of money annually? But just by sitting in the house or in the studio, uh, with a microphone and a camera talking about a club that they don't have a share in, that they can afford not to even go to the match day and buy ticket and watch. They make that type of money. So building an ecosystem takes time. The reason why these guys are benefiting from it now is because people like David Dean, my, my father's friend, and a host of others built a league that have run for 30 years. And in the 25th or so year, uh, young, young people saw the opportunity on the internet, uh, a certain Steve Job out of nowhere created podcasts. The Internet of Things arrived. Some people created Google that they also created YouTube. And then they are making money from it. We're all going to be there. I'm talking to you today because when COVID hit, someone created Zoom. And we're benefiting from it. 
So we're going to get there eventually. Uh, we would invest. Some of that people will come from behind and invest less and make more money. We will get there. I mean, I'm, I'm not even disturbed. When people tell me you're spending this money, when are you going to get a return out of it? I definitely will get big returns out of it as time goes on. I mean, when Bosman went to court and uh, demanded that he gets um, free from his contract, when the contract ends, people said he was stupid. But uh, today, uh, when uh, Mbappe signed that contract that gives him 170 million, it is because of Bosman going to court. So some people are going to be willing to make the sacrifice. Unfortunately, conventional media and the abolica in their ways are not willing to make that sacrifice, they're not willing to make the investment. So the, the, the speed is not accelerated. We have sports ministers who don't understand this conversation we're having. We have an NFL president who does not understand all these things that we're talking about. And then we have a government who does not really think that investing in sports is important to them. So all of those also is making it hard for people who are picking interest in it. But guess what? Uh, the the choir, the congregation is increasing. It's going to come a time where we get a critical mass. And when that critical mass coming, it is going to be a boom. That is the same thing that happened with music, the same thing that happened with Nollywood, the same thing that happened with comedy. But look at them today. They fly private jets all over the place. Do you think that uh, this is how that it was for Dan Juma? No, it wasn't like this for Dan Juma when he was a comedian doing Night of a Thousand Lives. you think that Zeme Jiru and um, uh, uh, the other one his brother, Shikwe Juru, when they were doing Night of a Thousand Lives, you think it was this easy? You think it was easy when uh, they were doing the uh, In the Candy Princess is Serpent? No. But look at the people who make big money from uh, doing movies. The movie that came out yesterday and on cinema, they already made in one day, 24, at less than 24, they made 47 million. So you can tell that eventually it's going to happen. We're okay. just at the beginning stage, or just at the exploration stage, but it's oh, going to happen. Oh, okay, so Edu, um, Edafi. This is the point. This is the point I was going to make. Actually, had I had, if if I was able to contribute to that on that platform, the fact that we will get there, like you have said, Absolutely. and there's reason to be optimistic, because when you're optimistic, then you can see opportunities, as opposed to when you dwell on problems. And I thought too many people dwelt on problems. Do you understand? So there's opportunity in the media industry. Um, and our sports. And I think that, like you said, you, you, you don't trust certain people with the, with the, with the league. And um, you know that some, some circumstances are not right. So I, I guess that what we, what we need to preach now to the people in your constituency is that go ahead and do what you're doing. In fact, multiply your efforts because you get there faster and then there's going to be, the rewards are going to be really, um, uh, commensurate it to whatever sacrifices you have made. Let, let, let me give you let me give you a, a little example. So for those who are watching us right now who are seeing this and say, oh, why are you foolishly investing that much money? So if I put uh, that whole 30 million into a landed property, I know it will appreciate, but believe me, it will not turn from 30 million to 60 million, 100 million overnight. It still needs about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then I still need to pray that government will send a road network to that area, business services will come to that area. If not, it doesn't happen overnight. I live in an estate where when I moved into this area in 2006, uh, land was going for 100,000, 500,000 and rest, okay? Now inside this estate, land is now for 30 million in the deep end and then at the, on the other side is 50 million, 40 million. But I have been here since 2006. So if we're, if we're doing a proper calculation, it's almost 20 years now, 18 years that I've been here. So if we're also going to do that kind of calculation, let's do that kind of investment with the Nigerian league, and in another 10, 15 years, let's look back and see what the numbers is. If you do 1,000 views on any content from a monetized channel, if you get do 1 million views, so you get $1,000 uh, paid, right? But as you progress, that 1,000 begins to come easy as you progress with your numbers, uh, your channel become monetized, but from monetized you go to have membership, people start gifting you. There's a lot of things that happen. If people, there are people in Nigeria who get uh, $10,000 from TikTok, from talking rubbish, doing nonsense, right? There are people who get the same amount from just showing breasts and back backside yeah. on Facebook and on TikTok. So the thing is, you've got to tell yourself that. Some people think that when you promote the NPSL, you are helping Nigeria. No. You're not helping Nigeria. You're helping your economy. Not all of us with Japa and go and be changing diapers for old people abroad. Not all of us with Japa and go and be suffering and smiling and pretending 
abroad and then you know when we have a chance to come on social media we pretend like everything is fine yeah. some of us are going to roll up our sleeves here like the people in that country where you are jack to so, roll up their sleeves walk the mud walk the walk and set up a country that you not love so some of us are going to do that and eventually we would arrive listen okay sorry, sorry you... Andrew, um, Ed, 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 sorry yeah one last question because we we need to uh, bring this home Okay. In, in, on social media, yeah, or in, in the Nigerian media space, we think, that, we think that promoting foreign content gets us more engagement and, and um, reads. But, you know, I think I see that most of the influencers in the space, the Pujas, the, uh, the Adequajus, built their, their following from the, from the, from the low domestic scene. And they're doing great. And, and when they engage on, on serious domestic sports issues, they get, they get chunks of, of responses. So why do we still think that the, the foreign news or foreign sports is where we get our, our numbers from? OK, so this is how it works. Uh, it's psychological. The idea here is, if you look at Toby, for every one Toby you see, there is an OJB, there is an uh, uh, Shiro Keneji, there is King of them all, Omar Katuba. The question I would ask anybody right now today, would you take it that way over Omar Katuba? The answer is no. Everybody wants Omar Katuba, you understand, because yeah. he's able to travel within a system. So that waters down what we do. Again, Omar Katuba lives in Germany, and if he puts the content uh, on YouTube and gets 1 million views, he gets 8,000 euros. Whereas if I do the same thing, I get 1 million views, I get $1,000. So you see the disparity. But it is a systemic thing. It is what the system, the structure is, because the advert power in Nigeria is lesser than the advert power or budget in, in, in Europe. But because people don't understand the algorithm and what happens with the algorithm system, they kind of like feel, I mean, I see here people say things to me, I own a company, I employ staff, I pay salary in Nigeria. But you see here people say things like, you this local journalist, go and see your mates abroad. Because that's how our minds have been conditioned. So mm -hmm. they say to me, like local champion, go abroad and prove yourself. Do we need to go abroad and prove ourselves? The guys, uh, Gary Lineker is not going abroad to prove himself. The Jimmy Carragher, all of these guys are in England doing their thing and we help them. The Nigeria does not need to go abroad, but the does not need to go abroad. But when it's in Nigeria, it needs to go abroad. abroad. That okay. mindset is what we need to fix. Once we fix that, then everybody will see that this farm is big enough for us to cultivate. Okay, okay, Edafi, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. Um, this is not the first time, and this is most certainly not the last time. Uh, I'll be here for you. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. The MPFL is growing. Um, Nigerian sports is growing locally. And um, we need the local growth to be able to create the sort of business support that can then be taken globally. All right. If you don't like yourself, nobody's going to like you. The more we like ourselves, the more our sports is going to become more appealing to the world beyond. All right. We're going to go on a short break now. When we return, I'm going to have Mr. Olushala Lawson in the studio. And we're going to be talking about the Lere fun at -on. It's a new concept in, and it's a participation sports concept. When Mr. Lawson comes in, there's a lot you're going to hear about it that, you know, would pique your interest, especially if you live in the Surulere area. Don't go away. When we return, the business continues.